Hello and welcome to this video on solving linear equations where the variable appears on one side of the equation only. Now what does it mean to solve an equation? It just means to find the value of whatever variable you have in the equation. So in this case we've got an equation we want to find the value of x. Now often you can do these things just by inspection. So you'd think well what plus 5 would give you 7. And you realise, well, that's just 2. 2 plus 5 gives you 7. So the value of x is equal to 2. But we're going to do it by the idea of balancing equations. Now, if you imagine some scales like this, and you've got a bunch of things on each side of the scale. Now, let's say you've got uh, sweets on each side of these scales. If I took off one sweet from the left-hand side of the scale, so if I took away one sweet, then what do I have to do to the other side of the scale to balance it? Well, I have to take away one sweet as well. So if I take away one, I have to take away one from here to balance it. And we can imagine there's this equals in the middle. So the weight of the left-hand side has to be equal to the weight of the right-hand side. What if I double the number of sweets on this side? Well, then I'd have to double the number of sweets on the right-hand side as well. So basically, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. Now, to solve equation can be thought of as getting x on its own. So what have we got around x that we need to get rid of on this side of the equation? Well, we've got this plus 5. So how do you get rid of the plus 5? Well, you can do the opposite. You can take away 5. So if we take away 5 from this side of the equation, then in order to balance these scales, I have to take away 5 from the other side of the equation. And then what the minus 5 does is get rid of that plus 5. We've got this, these 5 sweets here, and we take away 5, it gets rid of those 5 sweets. So we then just have x on the left-hand side. And then if we subtract 5 from the right-hand side as well, because whatever we do to the left, we have to do to the right, then we get 2. Now this might seem a bit like overkill, when we could instantly see that it was 2, but this will massively help you when you get to some of the hard equations. Let's do another example. Let's say we had 3x is equal to 12. And you remember, when you have things next to each other in algebra, it means you're times them together. So that means 3 times x, i.e. 3 lots of x. Now remember, we want to get rid of the things around the x. So x is currently being multiplied by 3, so that we do the opposite to get rid of it. So what's the opposite of timesing by 3? Well, dividing by 3. So we're going to divide the left-hand side by 3 which means we also have to divide the right-hand side of the equation by 3. So when we divide 3x by 3, it gets rid of that times by 3, it undoes it, and we're just left with x. And if you divide 12 by 3, you get 4. So x would be 4. And you can always check this by just substituting the 4 back into the original equation. So 3 times 4 is indeed 12. And just one more quick example before we get onto these. If we had, say, x minus 6 is equal to 11, how do we get rid of that minus 6? Just leave x on its own. Well, we do the opposite. We add 6. So I add 6 to the left-hand side. Then I also have to add 6 to the right-hand side. So adding 6 gets rid of that minus 6. You're just left with x. And then adding 6 to 11 gives you 17. And that would be the answer. Let's check it. 17 minus 6 is indeed 11, so it worked. So let's do some of these equations here. We've got 2x plus 5 is equal to 13. Now notice we have to do more than one step here. Let's think about the story of what's happening to x. x is first multiplied by 2, and then you're adding 5 to it. So you have to undo the things, but in reverse order. So the last thing we did to get 13 was add 5. So we undo that first, we subtract 5 from each equation. Don't try and divide by 2 first. And then that gets rid of the plus 5, so we're just left with 2x on the left-hand side. And we do 13, and we subtract 5, we get 8. Oh, and now we've got something a bit simpler. So x has been multiplied by 2. We want to get rid of the multiplied by 2, so we divide by 2. We do the opposite. And we do that to both sides of the equation. So that gets rid of the 2, we get x. And then the 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. Now let's just check that. If x is 4, 2 times 4, 2 lots of 4, is 8 plus 5, is indeed 13. It worked. Let's do another example. We've got 3x minus 7 is equal to 8. x is being multiplied by 3, and then you're subtracting 7. So you want to undo the subtract 7 first, because that's the last thing you did on that side of the equation. So we're going to add 7, do the opposite. 
So that gets rid of the minus 7, and we're just left with 3x on the left-hand side. 8, if we add the 7, we get 15. And then x has been multiplied by 3, so we divide by 3 to get rid of it. And that means that x is equal to 5. Right, so a few variants here. We've got 4 plus 5x is equal to 14. Now, what a number of students don't realise is that when you have 4 plus 5x, that's just the same as 5x plus 4. Like, this 5x is not being multiplied by 4 just because it's sort of on front of the 5x. It's still an addition of 4 and 5x. And with addition, it doesn't matter which way you add them round. Like, 2 plus 3, for example, is the same as 3 plus 2. So, let's think of what, what's happening to x. It's being multiplied by 5, and then you're adding 4. So, you want to get rid of the 4, because it was the last thing you did. So, we subtract for and then that just leaves 5x equals 14 minus 4 is 10 and then we just divide both sides by 5 and that gives you x is equal to 2 and by the way these little things in brackets that's to show my method but I would actually recommend gradually weaning yourself on these you don't actually need to write these um, as part of your working it's just why you try and get used to solving these things so we've got 10 plus 7x is equal to 4. So again, x has been multiplied by 7, and then you're adding 10. You don't want to add 10, so we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. So that's going to get rid of that plus 10, so we're just left with 7x. And then 4 minus 10 is minus 6, negative 6. And then we want to get rid of this times by 7, so I'm going to write it this time. Divide by 7. Now, if you divide this by 7, you just get x. And be very careful here. Minus 6, when you divide by 7, it's minus 6 over 7. And what a lot of students do wrong is they, they do the wrong way around. They do 7 divided by 6. But look, we're dividing it by 7. We're dividing it by 7. The 7 is at the bottom of the fraction. And it's absolutely fine to have a fractional answer. We like fractions in algebra, they're absolutely fine. Do not try and give it as a decimal approximation, that would just look stupid. In general, recurring decimals are bad. Right, so 5, we got 10 minus 2x is equal to 4. Now, this is a bit harder. What, what's happening here? You could think of this as x being multiplied by minus 2, and then you're adding 10. So this could actually be rewritten as minus 2x plus 10, the left-hand side, that is actually the same as that. It's minus 2x, and then imagine that's a plus on the front of it, plus 10. So we could subtract 10 to get rid of this 10. So we have minus 2x. Subtract 10 from here, we get minus 6. And then x has been multiplied by minus 2, so we're going to divide both sides by minus 2. So that just leaves x here. And then minus 6 divided by minus 2, well, negative divided by negative is positive, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it's just going to be 3. We'll see when we get to the next video when we consider equations with the variables on both sides. So there's actually an alternative method to this that I would use that would make this a bit tidier. Now, the last few questions, we've got uh, 3 brackets 2x plus 1 minus 5 equals 40. Now, there's a lot going on here, but the first thing to do in general when you're solving equations is usually you would try and expand out any brackets that you have. So let's expand this out first. Well, we got three lots of 2x. Remember, we do this thing here times each thing inside the bracket. So 3 times 2x is equal to 6x. And then we've also got three lots of 1, so that is just plus 3. And then you've got minus 5 is equal to 40. Also try and tidy up wherever you can. We can collect like terms here. We can do the plus 3 minus 5. So that would just simplify to 3 minus 5 is minus 2. And then we've got something that resembles what we've solved before. So we could add 2 to both sides to get rid of the minus 2. Gives you 42. And then you could divide both sides by 6 to get x is equal to 7. And then finally we've got this. We got 11 is equal to 3y minus 5. 
Now, this is just to illustrate two things. One is that it doesn't have to be an equation in terms of x. It could be in terms of uh, a different variable, a different letter, in this case y. And also, it doesn't matter that the y is on the right-hand side. We can still solve this in the same kind of way. So let's think of what's happening to y. It's being multiplied by 3. Then you're subtracting 5. So we add 5 to both sides. That becomes 16. And that becomes 3y. And then y is being multiplied by 3. So we divide both sides by 3. And when we do that, you get 16 over 3. You can't simplify that. It's equal to y. In case you're tempted to convert that into a mixed number, please don't. In algebra, we generally always avoid mixed numbers. If you have a fraction, just leave it as an improper fraction. That's the best way to write your answer. Right, we've got these two test your understanding questions I want you to do. So we firstly got 6x minus 4 is equal to 44. I want to solve that. And then this second one, I've got 2 plus 5, 3x minus 2 is equal to 12. So you may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at these. Right, let's do it. So this one, we want to get rid of the minus 4 because it was the last thing we did to x. So we add 4 to both sides. So that becomes 6x. It so gets rid of the minus 4. And we add 4 to this side. We get 48. And we need to get rid of that times by 6. So we divide both sides by 6. And 48 divided by 6 is equal to 8. And that is the final answer. Let's check it. If x is 8, 6 times 8 is 48. Minus 4 is 44. That's right. Right, this one. As I said before, if you've got brackets, expand it out first. And don't be tempted to do 2 plus 5 first, like as, as if that was one thing. Remember, with Bidmus, you do the multiplication first. So it's going to be 5 times the 3x minus 2. And then you're going to be adding 2. So let's do this bit separately. We'll expand it out separately. So it's 2. We've got the 5 times the 3x, which is plus 15x. We've got the 5 times the minus 2, which is minus 10 equals 12. Let's just tidy up a bit by collecting like terms. 2 minus 10 is minus 8. You've got the plus 15x is 12. And then, where well, we've got 15x and then you're adding negative 8. So to get rid of the negative 8, you're going to add 8. So we add 8 to both sides. And that's going to just give us 15x equals 20. And then we need to divide both sides by 15. So x is 20 over 15. And we can simplify that by dividing top and bottom by 5. So that's going to give you 4 over 3. And that is the final answer.